Okay, start recording. And okay, so last class we were talking about how to convert um, decimals to fractions. And what you do is you just kind of read the decimal very formally, and then you write down what that is as a fraction. We did like 0.625 is 625 thousandths. And then you simplify. What we're going to do today is we're going to convert fractions to decimals. Okay, so I'm going to go to my iPad and I'll share a screen there. So we have a bit to get through, so I'm going to skip the uh, in-class 30-second challenge. But we have our fractions to decimals. So oops, let's go away. This is section 2.4 class notes. Okay. So yeah, as I said before, we had, if you want to convert from decimals to fractions, you can say 0.625 is equal to 625 thousandths. When you simplify, when you simplify, you actually get 5 eighths. Divide both by 125. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way. We're going to do fractions to decimals today. And when you do a fractions to decimals, um, you can start with a fraction, let's say 3 eighths. And what you can do is you can just divide if you want. This is, will always work, but we're going to look at some other ways to convert. So 3 eighths is equal to, what we're going to do our division here, 3 divided by 8. Okay. 8 doesn't go into 3, so we're going to have a point decimal there. It does go into 30 though. Uh, 8 times 3 is 24. So 6 left over. And we have another 0 that we can bring down. We'll write one in. 8 into 60 goes 8 times. Eight, no, it goes 7 times. That's too much. 56 and a 0. And then we have 8 goes in 5 times. And we're done. So 3 eighths is equal to 0 0.375. Okay, so that one will always work. Sometimes you'll get a repeating decimal. But with what that is, is the algorithm, very abstract. We want to build a base for fractions decimals before we get to the algorithm. And we're gonna go ahead and start by using base 10 blocks. So it's a more concrete way. Okay, so a concrete way to convert fractions to decimals. So we're gonna take our fraction, we're gonna start with one half. Okay, more concrete way to convert one half to a decimal. When we're going to use base 10 blocks, we need to uh, make a key, right? So our key is going to be the large cube 
is going to correspond to one. Since we're focused on decimals, we'll have most of our baseline blocks correspond to decimal things. The flat will correspond to 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. The rod corresponds to 0 0.01 or 1 one hundredth. And then the little dot or the small cube will correspond to 0 0.001, which is 1 thousandth. Okay. So we're converting a half to a decimal. You take your big cube, that's one, and divide it by two. So one half is actually equal to one divided by two. And we can take our big cube, before we take our big cube, and divide that into two groups. So there's a picture, I'm gonna draw a little depiction here. Big cube split up into two groups, okay? We can do, let's do, we can think of them as, yeah, just two groups right here. Okay. Or you can think of them as like two baskets or something. Yeah, these two spots that we're gonna put in the big cube. And however much is in one of those, is one half, okay? However much as a decimal. So we separate it into two groups. I'm only gonna look at how much is in one of those. So I'm going to switch over to uh, my camera here. And I'm gonna show you how I do the two groupings. So I need that one big cube, but that one big cube I don't have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring out my big cube. I can't separate the big cube into one half. So I'm separating out into my my flats, I'm gonna pull out, separate them all out here. Okay, so that big cube can go into 10 flats. Okay. How many flats do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, 10 flats. Since I can't take one big cube and separate it into two groups, I separate my cube into 10 flats. That's taking my one and dividing it up into tenths. Okay, now I can take these and I can make two groups out of it. Okay? So let's go ahead and gather them up. And I'm gonna deal out one group here, one group here. Okay? So I'm taking all of them and I'm dealing them out into these groups. So like, I'll do columns. Right, does everybody see that? Two groups. Now one of those groups was supposed to be for whatever the decimal equivalent is. So how much is this flat? These flats are worth a tenth each. So I have five tenths. Five tenths here and five tenths here. So one half or one of these groups of ten, five tenths is what my answer will be. So going back to my picture, I separate the big cube into tenths. So big cube is going to go right here. So one, two, three, four, five. I have to separate them into flats here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, okay? So this many will go into this bowl here. This many will go into this bowl here. So how much is whatever's in that bowl is what one half is. So that's equal to five tenths because I used five of the flats to break it up. 
Does everybody got that? Any questions so far? What we're going to do now is we're going to break up. We're going to, so, that, so one half is equal to five tenths. Let's do another example in that similar fashion. We're going to break up one third. One third is equal to what as a decimal? I would like you guys to take your base 10 blocks, take your, your, your big block we don't have, but we're going to divide them up into parts anyway. So take your 10 flats, put them into three groups, like in your area, and tell me what the decimal equivalent will be for one of those groups. And if you can move your camera around, it'd be great to see that on our class video. You can show how you've divided up the one big block into three groups, three little bins there, three little areas. Um, Mr. B, I think Camille's showing the image. Okay. I was she's doing. wondering, because like, what do I put the little one into rods, like the last one, and even it up? Okay, that's a great thought. Or what do you guys think? We have, she has, and then there's also Sid. Sid has some too, all divided up. They have one left over. What should we do with that one? We need to divide that one into three groups too, right? So Camille asks, should we divide that up into flat or rods? What do you guys think? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. So go ahead and divide those up into rods and start putting them together with your groups of three. So, yeah, so let's see. Let's see most got some. Sort of. All right, Sid, what do you got there? You got one rod left. Okay, here we have, Ariana, has got one too. And so she's divided hers up. Ariana, what'd you do with your rod? What's that? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. So let's see if you can see that. So I did three of the big cubes, three rods, and then three of the little cubes. Right, so each group will have three of those denominations, right? Okay. Excellent work, everyone. Good job, Sid, too. So you'll keep going with the, oh, Shelby's got hers displayed, good. So that's what happens when we take up, okay, good, Camille's got hers finished. When we take our big block and separate it into something that's not divisible by 10, very nicely, we have to kind of see what to do with the, the piece, that extra piece that keeps, you keep breaking it down, okay? And so I'm gonna go back to my uh, iPad. And what we're doing is we're kind of using We're using the low levels of abstraction, concrete and pictorial. Okay, so we did some concrete work with this one. And then I went ahead and drew out one third as a decimal. Now, we took each of our flats. So as a drawing, you can do something like this if you want or any other way to organize. The three flats here. So I have one, two, three. So I'm gonna copy down what you guys did, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We separate our 10 flats into as many places as we can. There's this one odd one left over. 
So we cross that one out and we break that one up. We break that one up into 10 rods. And we put those rods in. And we have one rod left over. So we break that rod up and put in little dots. And there's one, one dot left over. Now we don't have any more denominations for our base 10 blocks. So with, with this, because we have one left over each time we divide them out, we need to see a pattern here. If we were to take that one unit cube and divide it up into 10 parts, the same thing will happen. We'll distribute nine of them into these three groups. And so one third, we have decimal three, 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 okay? Because we have the three flats right here, the three rods right here, and then the three ones, little cubes right there. Okay? So you, you went one of those groups here, you look at with the um, pictures, going with the pictures and the base 10 blocks concrete models, back to our abstract numbers. The flat represented a tenth, and then the rods represented a hundredth, so there's three of those, and the new cube's a thousand. Now, we're going to go ahead and do three dots like that which means that you repeat that decimal, the digit for the decimal continues on. We can also write it as 0.3 with the line above it. That means that the three repeats. So we start breaking down this one and dividing into groups of three. So this is kind of a little bit of an introduction to division as well, it's, which is good. Okay. What we need to do is we need to keep going here. What is one fourth as a decimal? Okay, go ahead and uh, take your blocks, separate them out into four groups, and what do you end up having? So show us, that, show us that one. I'll go ahead and stop sharing so everybody can see. I have one big block, and you separate into four groups. Okay, so you're splitting up your 10 flats into four groups. How many are gonna go in each group? What will you do with the leftovers? Okay, Aspen's got her picture. She's drawing it out. Good. So Aspen, tell me what you did when you're with your drawing. So you had two leftover flats in the end, and so you just break them down into rods, and then you could split them into five groups of four. Okay, will this decimal be repeating decimal or not? No. Okay, it does not repeat. Okay, great. So that's good. So you don't have to like do some abstract thinking about the repeating pattern, but you can see what happens to them. Good, thank you, Aspen. Okay, does anybody have theirs? Uh, Sid's got her concrete model there that she's showing. Sid, tell us, oh, and Shelby's got hers all done. Did you do something similar to Aspen, Sid? Yes. Okay. All right, so yeah, moving on, let's go ahead and uh, go to the next one, we'll share screen here. Okay, so I took one fourth as a decimal. We wanna separate that big block into four groups. We'll do that with, um, Okay, we had two that fit in each group with two left over. 
We can't separate two flats into four groups, so we need to make them into rods. So we cross those out, make them into 20 rods. Now the 20 rods can be distributed If you put five into each of the four groups, that'll get rid of all of the rods. Now one fourth is just one of those groups. So we look at our representations, the flats are tenths, and then the rods are hundredths. So that's how we can show that one fourth is the same as 0.25 or 25 hundredths. All right, you guys getting the gist of this? Let's go ahead and do a different example, maybe a little bit harder one. Let's do one sixth as a decimal. And what is one sixth as a decimal? And go ahead and work that out with your concrete model uh, or a drawing if you have the drawing ones available. So my mode is to take my one six, my big block, separate it into six groups. Now some of you might not have enough uh, rods to do this one, but if you do, that's great. But otherwise, we can go to drawings. These drawings will help us. Okay, Tracy's got something here. Tracy, tell us about what you did. And then Nicole has something too. Okay, so you're muted right now, still. Sorry. Okay. Oh, go ahead. I so I got 1.66 and then dot, 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 because it goes on. Um, but I have one flat for each group and then six rods for each group and then the six little blocks for each group. Okay, so um, great. That sounds like, um, and Nicole, do you agree with that one? Okay, so that sounds like uh, what everybody's getting. What was that decimal again? I got 1.66 and then it just goes on with all the sixes. So like dot, 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 like we did before. So we want to uh, have our flats worth as tenths. So you gotta go down another um, place with your decimal. So it should be 0.16 repeating. Because the flats are equal to a tenth. Okay. Yeah. Good work though. All right, so we have our one six. We fit in a flat to each blocks because it's too many bins or 
baskets for one, uh, two flats to go in there. So we are left over with four of these flats. We need to cross them all out. And I have four flats become 40 rods. I need that 40 rods to divide into six bins. So that means there's six rods that can fit in there. And when you divide those into rods, you have four left over because you've used 36 of them. Okay. And those four will also divide into um, six dots each, okay? Because it's the same division as rods. We have 40, four rods divided into six spots. Now, what I'm going to use up, I'm sorry, use up too many on that one. And once we get rid of all of the 36 dots, which is six groups of six dots, we have four dots left over. So, so far we have for one sixth, one of these groups here corresponds to one tenth, six hundredths or six rods, and six of units. And it keeps dividing that way into the pattern. So we put 1.6 repeating. Sorry, 0.16 repeating. The line goes over just the six. All right, so let's go ahead. We've done this several times. Let's go ahead and, and think more abstractly for our next example. In this example, we are going to divide up or find out what one ninth is as a decimal. Can anybody, I'll give you guys a minute to think, but once you guys have it, can anybody describe to me what you could do to find out what the answer is as of one ninth as a decimal? Describe how things would divide up. It's like your big block. And make one ninth as a decimal. Can you just do one of each because it's almost 10, so you're basically just counting them all out till nine, and then call it, counting them all out to nine, so just one of each thing. That's right. Taking the 10 flats, putting them into nine groups, you have all nine just have one flat. Okay, so there's nine flats there. So I have all nine in, in there and I have one left over. So I'm just gonna cross out. I need to distribute that one flat to the nine groups. How many can I distribute again? Nine. Right, so you can only distribute nine of the rods. One rod is left over, we need to break that one up. I can only distribute nine of those dots. Okay. And so these are my groups here. So one of those groups, point one, one, one. And it will go on forever, divide out like that. So one ninth is point one repeating. Let's do another uh, hypothetical example. What is one twentieth as a decimal? How would you break down that flat? One, we need to divide one into 20 groups. One big block, block, big cube into 20 groups.
Wouldn't it be 0 0.05? Okay, how'd you get that? Um, well, when you break up the cube into 10 flats, you can't, that's less, that's, yeah, less than 20. Mm -hmm. And then you break the 10 flats into 100 rods. Good. And then it goes in in each group. We took our big cube, divided that into 10 flats. Okay. That's still not enough units for one group. You can't fill up anything in the groups. We take our 10 flats, divide up into 100 rods. Okay. Now, 100 rods is more than 20, so you can take the 100 rods and put them into groups. And when you do that, we're taking 100 and divided it in by 20 to put it into 10, 20 groups, and we have five rods in each group. So that means that 1 20th is equal to 0 0.05 because each rod is 100th. All right, good thinking, everyone. So that's how you convert fractions to decimals. You can divide them. But those are all unit fractions, what I told you to do, right? And so what we need to do is we need to think about non-unit fractions, which is what we come across with in life more than unit fractions. So this is a key. So non-unit fractions to decimals. Let's start out with three-fifths. Three-fifths as a decimal. Now what we did is we can kind of create a story here. I'll model this one to show you what I'm fishing for. So three-fifths is equal to three times, sorry, one-fifth times three. Okay, so we can break up the three fifths into one fifth times three, or three times one fifth. That's um, because what what does three fifths mean? Let's go back to that. What does three fifths mean? Can someone chime in, just to help review that concept? Three pieces out of five equal groups. Or three pieces. The three pieces. Of five partitioned groups from a whole. Right. So the three pieces, each of which is one fifth of the whole. Okay, so three times one fifth. I have three pieces that are one fifth. Three groups of one fifth. We'll get into that more when you study multiplication. Now, one fifth we know as the, is the decimal. Well, once you get the homework done, you'll know what one fifth is, is as a decimal. It's point two. We can think about this as, uh, yeah, it's point two. Let's write that down. And so when you want to convert in your mental math or on paper, converting three-fifths to a decimal and non-unit fraction to a decimal. You take the unit fraction, convert it to a decimal like what we did, and then you multiply that unit fraction by the amount of pieces there are in the numerator. So point two can be thought of as two flats. I take my big cube, separate it into 10 flats, and I need to put those flats into five groups. So that's only room for two flats per group, right? And so we have three times 0.2. And when we multiply that together, we have 0.6. Here's another example. We want to do, let's do five, six as a decimal. I'll show you a couple ways of how to do this one. 
Remember, of course, you can always do, you can always do this way if you want, five divided by six. That's eight, three. You can see the pattern now, getting 20s. Okay, that's way one. Way two is like what I just showed you. Five, six can be broken up into five times one sixth. Okay, what was one sixth? Does anybody remember? We want to kind of memorize these uh, unit fractions. It would be helpful to do that, do better mental math. Point what was one sixth? Six repeating. Right, five times point one six repeating. If you want to, this, what's really cool is if you will do operations with repeating decimals. If you want to know what that answer is, you got to take 0.16 and string it out a little bit. I'll string it out to five sixes so we can see a pattern. Multiply that by five. Now, since 0.16 repeating goes on forever, I'm only doing an approximation right now and picking up on a pattern. So using the algorithm, I do six times five is 30. 6 times 5 is 30, plus the 3, makes 33. Same thing, 6 times 5 is 33, 30 plus the 3 is 33. And at the end here, I do 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. Now my decimals moved over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places, so I'm going to do it on this one, 5, 6 places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, notice that I do 0.83, there's three threes and a 0. So you've got to kind of think about the pattern. I approximated to get to this number here. Now this one has got to be um, five, six must be then equal to 0.83 repeating. So there's another way to get to 0.83 repeating. Is if you do multiplication by hand and string out the repeating decimal a little bit. Now five, six, is uh, we know it's gonna be kind of a repeating decimal. It's not a nice number like the halves or the eights or the fifths or whatever. So let's break this up into two fractions. Okay. And see if those fractions are easier to find the decimal equivalents of. Now I broke five six into two six plus three six. So I'm going to simplify that to one third plus one half. And one cool thing about Egyptian fractions, if you like other cultures, is that Egyptian fractions, they never wrote, they always used non-unit, they always used unit fractions. They never wrote in non-unit. So if they wanted to write five sixths or something, they wrote it as a sum of unit fractions. And so if they ever needed to write five sixths in, on their plans for their pyramids or whatever, they wrote one third plus one half. So they have their symbol for one third, their symbol from a half, and they put them together. Okay. So that's kind of neat how they figured out, like any non-unit fraction, they figured out as a sum of unit fractions, whether one, two, three, or four unit, unit fractions. So we're adding one third and one half. What was one third as a decimal? Do you remember? Point three repeating. Right, <clears throat> repeating. Plus, what's one half as a decimal? Point five. Point five. Okay, so I need to add those together. So I'm gonna string out my point three two places here so I can add on the point five to it. So the point three and the, the tenths and the point three repeating and then the point five, add to point eight, and then the three repeating comes on to the right. Okay. So there's a few ways to change your fractions to decimals. Non-unit fractions now. Let's try, let's try the, going back to the ninth. I want you guys to try to in your own. What is seven ninths as a decimal? Was there a question? 
Yeah, I'm like not understanding how we're getting these numbers. For which one? Or like any of them. I'm like super lost. I'm like. Okay. Because I know how to like, I don't know, like I'm horrible with fractions. Like I'm just so like not understanding like where. So the main point for this, this uh, part here is you've got, well, you say, I saw your demonstration for taking their block and separating into groups, right? So for, yeah, I'm just, yeah, so you did the one third, fine. Here's one sixth. Again, as a review, I took my block and separated it out. But all came yeah, I have, oh. I have like the demonstrations are in here, like that we did. I'm just not like fully understanding how we're getting that number out of these. Oh, the number out of like the, the like the decimal out of the blocks, and so I think it like threw me off. Right. So the decimal out of the blocks. So for one one sixth, we separate out into these groups. I only need to take one of those groups of six and write that as a decimal. So I'm going to do orange. This flat here in one of the groups, and I take a look at this group right here. That flat is the same as 0.1, one tenth. Okay, according to my key from above. And you see this at the very beginning, I did a key right here. <laughs> The big block was one, the flat was one tenth, the rod is one hundredth, the small unit cube is one thousandth. So once we divided them all out, we just need to go back to the key and see what the value is of each of those parts in that one group. So that's why I'm saying that one flat is the same as point one. One of these rods here is the same as point zero one or one one hundredth and one of these units are point zero zero one or one one thousand so that's getting a bit small okay. and then because we have the leftovers like the little dots left over that's how we get the like the infinity sign above the last one right right okay so this part right here I need to divide those four dots amongst the six groups again. So I separate them into 10 parts, each dot into 10 equal pieces, but we don't have a manipulator for that. And so we put them, and the same okay. setup will happen. We'll still have six of those in each, each group. So finishing out that one flat that's red is 0.1 repeating. So I put that right here. I'm adding, it, I'm adding on the number of hundredths, which are the rods, and there's six of those, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I put the six in the hundreds place. And so the rod is concrete, the stick is pictorial, the number six is abstract. So it takes a little bit to make those connections, but they got it, you got a good base here. This one um, little dot is a cube. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six little cubes. There are thousandths. So I'm gonna put a six in the thousandths place. And if I was able to divide these four thousandths into ten thousandths, then I would have six of those as well. And that pattern continues, so I put three dots to represent the pattern. And another way, one mathematician a long time ago in history says, I think that we need to write repeating decimals with a line over it to show which part repeats. And that convention has been taken hold ever since he did that. And so that's what we do now. Historically, there has been other mathematicians that have done different representations for repeating decimals, but that's what's most intuitive, I think, for us today. Does that help? Yes, that helps a lot. Thank you so much. I was just like, I was so confused, but that really helped a lot because you only take the one part of it and then that works. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking your time to go back. Okay, what do you guys think now? Seven nines as a decimal. Did anybody get an answer for that? Mm, nobody, huh? I got 0.7 repeating. Yep, tell me how you got that. Well, because one ninth 
into a decimal is 0 0.01 repeating. And so if you multiply that by seven, then all your numbers are gonna become a seven. Right, they will. So we're going over that. So you might not be too sure about that at first. So you can, that's why we're kind of going over it. And you can improve it by doing that. So seven ninths is the same as seven times one ninth. This is the same as seven times the 0 0.1 repeating. We explored that earlier. We can take that as equivalent now without any intermediate explorations. And when you do 0 0.1 repeating, Timesing it by seven, you'll multiply every one of those by seven. So seven times one is seven, seven times one is seven, seven times one is seven. Move the decimal over three places and then you keep going. Okay? So that's how we get the answer to point one repeating. Or, uh, seven, sorry, seven nights as a decimal. Taking our point one repeating, multiply by seven. So this is leads to a generalization If one digit repeats, you put that digit over nine. Like 5.5 repeating is equal to five nines. Uh, point 0.7 repeating, oh, here you did that one. Point uh, 0.6 repeating is equal to six nines which is also equal to two thirds um, and so on. You guys get the idea. That's because one ninth is equal to 0.1 repeating. If you have a two digits that repeat, this could be on a fluency or something in the future. If two digits repeat, put those digits over 99. Okay. So for example, we have, if we had um, 0.23 repeating, that's 0.23 bar over it, that's gonna equal 23 over 99. Okay. That's because one over 99 is equal to 0 0.01 repeating. So all you have to do is multiply that number 0 0.01 times 23 or 44 or 45, so on. Make sure you simplify too on that one if you need to. Okay. Let me plug my computer back in. Any questions so far with non-unit fractions? You take the unit fraction multiplied by however many you want in the numerator. Uh, let's try another one. Let's do one more. Six elevenths. That's equal to six times one eleventh. Now, 1 11th is 0 0.09 repeating. And 6 times 0 0.09 repeating is equal to 0 0.54 repeating. What you can also do, next section, is that you can also derive um, decimal equivalents. by reasoning about common fractions that we already know the decimal equivalents of. For example, uh, what is the decimal equivalent for one half again? 0.5. Right, 0.5, 5 tenths. So the decimal equivalent is one half, of one half is 5 tenths, and I can use that to think about what the decimal equivalent of one fourth is. I can derive it another way. Because of this relationship, okay. 
So what is the relationship between one half and one fourth? One half is twice as big as one fourth. Good, one half is twice as big as one fourth. Okay, now I'm given that, well, I'm given the one half as the decimal. I need to derive the one fourth. So what's the relationship if I say one fourth is what? Compared to a half. I'm gonna switch them. I'm gonna make you redo your statement and switch them. So knowing this relationship is good. If you're given one fourth, you can multiply that by two to get to one half. What happens if I'm given one fourth? Or what happens if I need one fourth and I have a half? What's the relationship between one fourth and one half that way? You divide by two. Right, so one fourth is half of half. Does that sound good? So if I'm given a half, 0.5, what is the decimal equivalent for one fourth? Twenty-five hundredths or point two five? Right. Half of point five, half of a half. Okay. And if I take point five, I divide by two. How did you get that? How did you do one half or point five divided by two or half of point five? Well, I knew that five can't be divided by two, so mm -hmm. I added um, a hundredth. I added a zero to the five. So there was 50 and then divided that by two. Aren't decimals cool? You could do that. You just put a zero on. So that's one of the very great things about them is that, you know, a difference from whole numbers, if you put on a zero, that will change the value. But in order to operate with decimals, you can put a zero on and then still manipulate. You can have more places to work with. Okay. Excellent. So here's the next one. If one fourth is 0.25, how much is an eighth? Would be 15, right? No. Get that? Oh. I like. You can think about it for some more and, and voice another thought after that. 1.25. So 1 8, you said it was 1.25? No, not 1.25, sorry. 0.125. Great. How'd you get that? Um, well, it's half of a fourth. Mm -hmm. And so. The two goes into two once, but then the five you have to split up just like you did for the one half, which would be 2.25. Or two five, sorry. My brain isn't working. Isn't that okay? So one eighth is half of one fourth. And one fourth we know was 0.25. So I need to know half of 0.25. So equals a half of 0.250. If you want to add on the zero again, so you can take a half of it <laughs> evenly, as it were, you can get 0.125. Okay. Half of the 25 is 12 and a half, so that might help you as well. But I think go back to uh, whole numbers a little bit. Okay, so you can derive decimal equivalents by knowing some simple ones and then getting some of the more trickier ones. So there will be a homework problem on that too. The last homework problem set is going to be estimating decimal equivalents. We've learned with halves and thirds and fourths and fifths and so on that those divide up kind of nicely. But we want to estimate more complicated fractions. Okay. By using fractions that are close. So my first example here is four fifteenths. I want to change the numerator and denominator by a little bit to see a nicer fraction. Okay. So for this one, I'm gonna show you kind of how it's done. I'm gonna change the numerator down one and do approximately equal to. Now approximately equal to is that squiggle equal sign. 
Four fifteenths is not exactly three fifteenths, but it's about the same. All I did was take the numerator, decrease it by one. And the fifteenths are pretty small, right? And in some sense, in most senses. So that means that, that we can probably find out what three fifteenths is as a decimal and work with that for whatever situation we're in. Now we, we decrease the numerator denominator by one or two or three pa uh, parts and we simplify the fraction. Now 3 fifteenths is about what? Or is equal to what? It's all simplified. One fifth. Right, one fifth. What was one fifth as a decimal? Point two. Great, point two. We take our big block, we put it, there's 10 flats now, we put two of them in each of those groups for five, groups of five. Five groups there. All right, now, is 0.2 going to be a little bit less than or a little bit greater than 4 fifteenths? So I'm comparing this one. 0.2 and 4 fifteenths. Because I'm going to add on some numbers. I'm going to adjust 0.2 decimal wise to see about 4 fifteenths. It's going to be less. Yeah, 0.2 is less, and how do you figure that? Because 4 is bigger than 3. So you have more pieces. Excellent. Point two is going to be a low estimate of what the decimal equivalent of four fifteenths is. Because notice that I had four fifteenths. Now I have three fifteenths. So point two is exactly three fifteenths. So this is a little bit of a lower estimate for four fifteenths. So it's actually one fifteenth less. So we're going to go up a little bit by about 0.06. So we're going to do that. 4 fifteenths is approximately equal to 0.26, let's say. Okay, let's try another one and have you guys try this. Um, well, actually, we'll, I'll make a note of something else you can do. Then I'll have you try another example. 4 fifteenths is about equal to 4 sixteenths. What I've done is I've increased the denominator a little bit to make a nice fraction, one fourth. Okay. If I increase the denominator a little bit, I get one fourth, that's equal to 0.25. Now, is 0.25 a little bit less than my 4 15 or a little bit more than my 4 15 Less. Okay, tell me how you got that. Because instead of having 15 pieces out of the whole, you have 16 pieces now, but you have the same amount of pieces. Right, these have a common numerator, okay. which means that I look at the denominator to think about their sizes. 4 fifteenths and 4 sixteenths. I, I have to think about which one is more or less based off the denominator. The whole is divided into 15 pieces here. And then in this one, the whole is divided into 16 pieces. Okay, how big are these pieces compared to each other? Which pieces are bigger, 15 or 16? Or which pieces are smaller? You can think about that one. Uh, 15 are a little bit bigger. Excellent. And how do you know that? I don't know how to explain it. Does anybody else how to explain it? Chime in. I do. Okay, go there's, ahead. So there's 15 pieces in the hole and 16 pieces in the hole, which if you're going to have 16 pieces out of the same hole, your pieces are going to be just a tiny bit smaller. Right. You can always compare it to dessert. You are, you're always going to want a little bit more, and if you have to cut it one more person, then it's going to be a little bit smaller. Good job, Nicole. That's perfect. Okay, so these ones are going to be slightly smaller. Okay, so if I have four of those pieces, notice I have four of the same amount of pieces. Four pieces of fifteenths and four pieces of sixteenths. I know the decimal equivalent of four sixteenths. That's going to be a little bit less than what my decimal equivalent is for 4 fifteenths. So that means that 4 fifteenths is going to be slightly bigger than my 0.25. So let's go 0.26 again. 
Okay, so you can manipulate the numerator and denominator a little bit into a nicer fraction and then simplify the fraction into something that you know. Okay. Now to know on, on the homework, they're gonna give you a worksheet and you're gonna finish out all of the parts that we started here for the taking the whole and divide into eighths and then ninths and so on. So you'll get to know what, how big the eighths and ninths are. Okay, we are about one more minute, so let's do 7 24ths. Here's your example, 7 24ths. Manipulate the, you want to manipulate the numerator or denominator to get a nicer fraction. And then tell me what the decimal equivalent will be. So go ahead and work on that for a minute and then we can share out. If you do need to go, then you can go ahead and go and, and you can look at the class video later. If you can stay for a few more minutes, then that'd be great. But this is the last thing we'll do for today. And we'll try to spread around the wealth too. So if you've shared a lot this class, then maybe somebody else can share who hasn't talked much. But if any, it's still open to anybody though, for time's sake though. So how big is 724? So rather than going down in size, I actually went up a little to eight over 24, because then you can make that a third. Okay. You want to do like a thumbs up or a chime in? If anybody did that, it's a great idea. So that's not equal, sorry. We have 724 is about equal to 824. So if it goes up a little bit and you get a third, what was the decimal equivalent for that one? Three repeating. Right, point three repeating. Now, is that a little bit too high or too low? Wouldn't we be a little too high now? Excellent, a little too high. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say 724 is about equal to something, a decimal that's a little bit lower than that. Maybe point, just point three. Did anybody manipulate the denominator at all? I did um, six twenty-fourths, which is a fourth, which is 0 0.25. Okay, yeah, six twenty-fourths, good. Which is equal to one four, which is equal to 0.25. Okay. Which kind of gets you, you would want to find something kind of in the middle of those two. Mm -hmm. Because. Because that one is a little bit, because why, sorry. Well, seven is right between six and eight. So if the pieces are the exact same size, it's going to be exactly right in half of those two numbers. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Okay, so we have uh, seven twenty-four. So then is about equal to 0.3. Go a little bit above 0.25. Um, or okay. Any other thoughts? Does anybody manipulate the denominator? If you move the denominator up or down by a little bit, or a little bit more than a little bit, what would you get? This is a new problem. Hold on. This one off. And then. You can change it to 21 on the denominator and then get Excellent. one third. Yeah, move the denominator down a little bit. That equals one third. Oops. 7 over Which 24 is, is about equal to 7 over 21. That's point 0.3 repeating. Now, when we move the denominator smaller, or bigger, so yeah, the denominator is smaller now. 
Is my estimate a little bit too small or a little bit too big? It would be too big because your pieces are more. Excellent. Your with a less smaller denominator, you have bigger pieces. So that means your decimal approximation is a little bit too big, and you need to bring it down a little bit. And so let's say that seven twenty fourths is approximately equal to two point three. All right, excellent work, class. Um, I hope you enjoyed our our decimal exploration and fraction exploration. There's some good connections there that you might not have seen before, so which means you've learned something. So that's always a good thing. All right, so that's all I had. Does anybody have any questions they can stay on and ask, or we can call it a day? No, thank you so much. Have a good day. You too, Camille. Bye, Nicole. I'm always the one behind. Sorry, <laughs> Dr. B. Um, one question. So if I do, um, I got piled on with a bunch of exams with my other classes, of course. And I wanted to know, um, if you do get to the grading before um, I submit the homework, is there still a percentage that I can do after your grading and yeah. you go back in? I, yeah, you can, you can get a percentage. I will see what, how time it goes. Um, okay. I, I don't want to make it I'm like not, something that you have to go out of your way for. I'm just saying so I don't miss out on all the points, if that's possible. Yeah, I know how things are with summer. And so I'll, I'm, these ones actually don't take too long to do. So I okay. might go back in and, and do and grade them. Um, but yeah, just turn them in when you can and, and we'll see how things go. I, awesome. Yeah. Because I feel confident about the exam, but I was very focused on it because <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got the most points possible on that. Yeah, we'll and then I was like, okay, homework. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Yep, you're welcome. Have a good day. Bye-bye.